Yesterday we left you on uh, quite a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. uh, why there are no calves in Britain's population of killer whales? Well, here's Mike finding out the answer. For four years, the One Show has been following the fortunes of the UK's only resident killer whale family. Whoa, look at that. Sadly, last year, this female, Lulu, was found washed ashore. But her death is giving scientists an unprecedented chance to learn more about her and investigate why, in 25 years following the family, they've never seen new calves. Her, her skeleton was transported from the beach where she was found. Indeed, nice. uh, for yeah, all your photos tonight. Right, so moving on to the killer section oh, yes. of the show now. Yes. Cars, we've got music from the killers and a film about killer whales, naturally. The killers will be performing The Man. But first, yesterday we left you on uh, quite a cliffhanger. Mm. Uh, why there are no calves in Britain's population of killer whales? Well, here's Mike finding out the answer. <laughs> For four years, the One Show has been following the fortunes of the UK's only resident killer whale family. Whoa, look at that. Sadly, last year, this female, Lulu, was found washed ashore. But her death is giving scientists an unprecedented chance to learn more about her and investigate why, in 25 years following the family, they've never seen new calves. Her skeleton was transported from the beach where she was found to the National Museum of Scotland for further investigation. I've enlisted the help of One Show Bone expert Ben Garrard and curator Dr Andrew Kitchener, who've been busy reconstructing Lulu's skeleton to see what it can tell not just about her death, but about her life. This unique opportunity also allows us to see the remarkable adaptations that make killer whales the ocean's top predators. So the skull tells a brilliant story. Now they have this big lump in the head here called a melon. It's an echolocating uh, organ and it pulses out a beam through the water. It travels, it hits an object like a fish or a shoal of fish and it comes back. It's the same as bats, it's the same as submarines. To keep her massive skull steady while hunting, all seven of her neck vertebrae are fused. So unlike us, killer whales can't turn their heads. So even something like her vertebrae are perfectly adapted for this ultimate killer of the RCs. Analysis of her teeth shows she was at least 20 years old when she died. Whilst her teeth are in good condition, her flipper does show some signs of wear. There is some indication here that she had some arthritis in her arm. You can see this roughening around the joint here. But overall, she was in pretty good shape. So why did Lulu, a healthy, mature female, never have a calf? A clue lies further down her body. The colour of the vertebrae is very strange. Unlike our bones, which have to support us on dry land and, and hold our weight, whales and dolphins are supported by the seawater. Yes. So the bone is much more porous. It's infused with oils, which help with the buoyancy, because oil is generally lighter than water. The oil found in the bones is also found in other tissues. And it was here they made a startling discovery. Whales and dolphins are covered in this layer of fat called blubber. It's a place where contaminants such as PCBs concentrate. And it's looking at those that actually told the harrowing tale of poor Lulu's um, health status. Now banned, PCBs are chemicals that were used in industry and are very slow to break down once they enter ecosystems. And it's the shocking levels of PCB contamination found in Lulu's body that could have had a devastating effect on her health and reveal why she and the other females have never managed to raise young. As Dr Andrew Brownlow, who recovered Lulu's body, explains. We looked at some blubber from Lulu. She had some of the highest levels of PCB that we've ever found in a marine mammal. So knowing what we do about the PCBs, do you think there might be a link with the fact that this community haven't bred for the past 25 years? PCBs can have a 
bad effect on the animal's reproduction system with the uh, immune system. They can cause cancer. The bad compounds, full stop. From being able to examine a body, we know a lot more about the threats and pressures that are on the group. They've been in UK waters for, as far as we know, most of their life. Therefore, they are representative of the state of our oceans. Her samples um, should very much be a shot across our bows, and we should take that quite seriously. PCB contamination is the best explanation of why our only resident population of killer whales has no calves, and now probably never will. We're joined by Mike now. I mean, it's really sad, Mike. Are we going to see any more orcas on our shores, though? The great news is, Al, we've had a bumpy year for orca spottings. Oh, particularly good. off Shetland, right. north of Scotland. Fishing vessels have gone out and seen hundreds around the boat. Mm -hmm. And whilst we might lose our resident population 25 to 30 years' time, it's nice that these animals that they're seeing are from Norway and Iceland. Their yeah. transient population's coming down for the fish. And so they, they may well stay. stay, Mike. They may stay and as we yeah. lose our resident ones, we may gain a new resident population. So exciting times ahead. Good. Watch the space for details. Ah, oh, see, that's cheered us up now, isn't Indeed. it? Indeed. Loads of killer whales. Talking of exciting and times music. ahead. Look at this lot here. Look at I them know. all. I know. It's amazing. Waiting with bearded flags. Mike, thank you so much. Thanks to Larry. Thanks to George as well. Uh, big thanks. Britain by Bike starts 29th of September. It's on at 8.